Now, interestingly, after those of us who started Yo Yoism, that's that religion, I'm not going to go into that, we chose the syllable Yo to represent the divine mystery. After we did that, we discovered that the Bambara people of Africa used the same syllable, Yo, to say something very similar. According to Clyde Ford, author of the mythic wisdom of traditional Africa, the Bambara people of Mali believe the universe begins and ends in the sound of Yo. Yo is the first sound, but it is also the silence at the core of creation. And emanations from this void through the root sound, Yo, created the structure of the heavens of the earth and of all living and non-living things. Everything, including human consciousness, emanates from the root sound, Yo. So, let me paraphrase Meister Eckhart, the mystic, the Bambara people and the Bible. Eckhart, the Bambara and the Bible. In the beginning was the word, and the word was Yo. I am the word that speaks itself. Or, to put it another way, let's use the words of Carl Sagan, a hard-headed materialistic scientist, who said, We are creatures of the cosmos, and have always hungered to know our origins, to understand our connection with the universe. Except for hydrogen and helium, every atom in the sun and the earth was synthesized in other stars. We are star stuff, which has taken its destiny into its own hands. Every human generation has asked about the origin and fate of the cosmos. Ours is the first generation with a real chance of finding some of the answers. We have lingered long enough on the shores of the cosmic ocean. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. One way or another, we are poised at the edge of forever. Part of our being knows this is where we came from. We long to return. And we can, because the cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are away the cosmos to know itself. We have begun to contemplate our origins. Star stuff. Pondering star stuff. Or as you know so, so well, you can sing along if you want. <laughs> I think it's the brother Aldous Huxley, the famous biologist Julian Huxley. As a result of a thousand million years of evolution, the universe is becoming conscious of itself, able to understand something of its past history and its possible future. This cosmic self-awareness is being realized in one tiny fragment of the universe in a few of us human beings. Perhaps it has been realized elsewhere, too through the evolution of conscious living creatures on the planets of other stars. But on this, our planet, it has never happened before. Mm -hmm. Or, as the incredible string band said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger than that, we're alive. Stranger 
sacraments mm -hmm. and um, out of this group of 12 people there was one person who decided she wasn't going to consume any sacraments and then after we had gone around and discussed our intentions and our goals for our you know sacred ritual and consumed our sacraments someone handed out these goddess cards to all of us and we each picked one out of this deck of tarot cards and we read what it said there was a little paragraph on the card about it um, I, you know, I picked Mary Magdalene, which may be a little uncomfortable. So. Um, but <laughs> the person who had decided that she wasn't going to consume any chemicals, her card actually said on it, the last sentence was, you should avoid any dangerous chemicals. <laughs> and um, I, you know, know a lot of those skeptical Albert Einstein type people who would say, well, that's just a random coincidence and, you know, it felt meaningful to all of you, but random things are happening all the time. And that's possible. But it's also entirely possible that, um, you know, within what appears to be randomness, there's a lot of meaning. Mm -hmm. And that, that meaning is the voice of Yahweh yeah, speaking mm -hmm. back to us. And you and Orion and I had this experience when we were walking in the Blue Hills. And right after, you know, Orion and I were telling you about forest dance, we ran into these people in the middle of the woods that mm -hmm. neither Orion or I had seen since forest dance. <laughs> to you it was a coincidence. <laughs> you know, it was at least, you know, much more possibly the voice of Yahweh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, there's no question that you have those experiences. I've had many of those experiences. I could, I could describe half a dozen or a dozen of them. I would love to see whether or not anyone could figure out whether or not those experiences ha happen any more frequently than they should happen by chance. You know, how many times do I walk around the corner and I don't run into the person I was just thinking about? Mm. But I've walked around the corner and run into someone I haven't thought about because I haven't seen in years and years and years and I've just I haven't been thinking about this, and there they are. That's happened. But is that really an indication of something beyond that we need more explanation for in the physical laws of the universe that scientists can pretty much measure? Or is it something that we should expect to happen when you have about a million bits of awareness occurring every day or every week uh, that become aware of a million things that, and almost all of them are not coincidences? So I don't know. Maybe there's some magic there that goes beyond what science can explain. I'm not convinced that either any, because when you look at the people who say they can do it more often than chance, 
When you look at those people, they can't do it more for the